guest, Mustafa. And uh, this is your chance to uh, find out more on a, on a personal, individual level what uh, all about refugees, or at least his experience. Uh, Mustafa, I should put a, a map of uh, the area there. What do you think I should type in? <laughs> um, so, since we are going, you know, on our trip to the, the refugee area, and you're going to do a paper on it, you need to start finding some interest in some specific issue in that topic. So, you know, we'll maybe hear some issues raised in this talk. So this will be kind of talk show, panel discussion, Q&A, format, uh, interview, qualitative interview. So um, so where are you from, Mustafa? Um, yes, uh, I'm so glad to be here today. So I'm actually, this one of the great opportunity that Mr. Mike and he called me and invited and let me know about my story and previous, how did I come. So actually I'm from Burma. Uh, which is called the state of Rakhine State in Myanmar. Mm -hmm. And uh, um, you live here now in Dallas, right? Yes, I live. I do. Yes, I live. How, how long do you live? Um, I, the first of my part of the entry in the New Hampshire. Uh, There's the place. The first time I arrived there, and then I stayed for one year, more than one year in there, and then so it was really cold for me. So, so and I have uh, my friends who are living in Texas. So and then he just invited me, saying that just to visit here is really good weather, and <clears throat> and I just did visit with him, and I just moved all the way there in the Dallas. So I've been living in Dallas almost four years right now. So yeah, the total okay. I arrived in the United States, I think more than five years. Yeah. Okay. So the what is the country color, or is it a? Uh, um, can you describe the country? from Myanmar or Burma? Uh, yes, the original, I mean like, the originally they used to call in Burma before. Now they changed the names when the British rule, it was Burma. Right now they changed the role, uh, the country name which is called in Myanmar. So oh. <coughs> the place that I was born, which is called the Rakhine Estate in Mondo Townships, that's the place I was born uh, with my parents. Can you point on the map of what city? Um, this is the city it's supposed to be here. No. Yes, it is. Yeah. Somewhere around there. Yeah, around here. Mm -hmm. This is the place where I was born, called Rokhang State. Um, near the state tree, this is the city of the capital of Rakhine State, the state tree. So this is the avenue. This is called the whole state. It's like a small island where across with the Bangladesh border. That's why uh, in Burma, the Burmese government, they are considered that most of the people who are living in Rohingya, uh, that area, so they are now recognized as uh, citizenship of Myanmar. This says uh, we as uh, m we just came from immigrant moved from Bangladesh to there in Burma, but we know that we live in there is 15 centuries since I born because I remember that my parent and my grandpa, my grandmother told me that they're living since their generation there. So I guess it would be like calling like Native Americans or even like <coughs> Mexicans here, 
uh, illegal politically, I guess, even though maybe they're still on this area. Uh, what was the name change about from Burma to Myanmar? Uh, I know that only the, since I was in school uh, when I was grade 10, and my te that's the great question that we asked the teacher. And then we asked the teacher, why did they change the Burma between, why did it make a difference between Myanmar and Burma? What is the difference this? And the, the, one of my teachers explained me that the, the Burma is all named when it was ruled in the, by British. And then they changed because there is dictatorship in a political party in our country. And then they changed the name, which is called in Myanmar. So most of the people, they understand. When I say, where are you from? I say, I'm from Myanmar. They, most of the people, they didn't get it. They didn't understand because they, they know when we call it Burma. You know? So it's commonly they call in Myanmar right now, they change. We never like here, like in, in the Middle East, we never hear about uh, Minimar. It's always Burma. Yes, always Burma. Yeah, it's always Burma. I just hear about Minimar only here in the state. So, so it's me. how long ago did they change the name? I'm sorry? How long, how long ago did they change the name? Uh, I think it was 1948. Mm. Oh, that, that long ago? Yeah, it's it long time ago. 1948, yeah. So now it's Myanmar, its own independent country? Uh, it's actually, you know, the Myanmar, since I was born, let me let you know the situation since I was born and grew up in my country. Uh, we don't have access in our country because the government, they are not allowed to the Rohingya people to go to school. We don't have freedom of education. We don't have freedom of religion. We don't have freedom of speech there. Um, let's say if you go to school in our country, you have to pay money. Which is you're not a fault. Like is that from for everyone in Myanmar? Everyone, or just no, only for just Rohingya community. Just Rohingya. So Be what? What is the other people? Uh, we have uh, the too many races like Hindus, and Christian, and Muslim, Catholic. Um, there are kind of you know different different religions over there. But the Burma government only restricted for the Rohingya people. As I mentioned you earlier, the reason why, because the, the government of Myanmar, they consider that Rohingya people, they, they, they just cross the border, the immigrant, they illegally to from Bangladesh to Myanmar, that's what they believe. But uh, we know that we are living many years, centuries ago, but uh, still they don't give our right. So that's what you can see that, I think you can see that YouTube, a lot of struggling, the people killings and atrocity, brutality, killing, who? The yeah. state of security forces, um, clearly, you know, some people. What about you using like your birth certificate? I mean, it says where you were born, so you could. Yeah, it's, pay, yeah, we have the, all the evidence that we have a birth certificate that where you were born, right. but and we have the school ID where we get the register in the school, but even though if you show them proof that they are not let us have a citizenship there, they say no, you can't. You have to write, go away from here. So that's why many of the people they escaping. You know, when I was escaping persecution, it was 2006 from my country. I was graduated from high school, which is I'm ready to go to the college. So to go to the from place from Rakhine State for the diff, I have if I go college, I have to go to a different state, which is called Sikwi. There is the capital of there. So if I go there, I have I have to spend more than one million kites which is called kites so more than one million means is one thousand dollars from here so even if i go there i have to get a permit i have to get a permission from the police station i have to go there and tell them hey i need to go to the college and to get a permit i have to spend around five lakhs myanmar kites so the total 15 lakhs, I have to spend money to go there. Mm -hmm. In Saitwe, <laughs> even if I go there, if they recognize me as a Muslim, they are not letting me there to go to school and continue in college. Okay, so we have like racial, ethnic, the racial ethnic. tribal uh, conflict. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> yeah. Is, like, could they possibly recognize you like say, oh, this person is Rohingya just by their physical looks and 
yeah, they go by names. See, my name, is, uh, my full name is Mustafa Kamal. So when I was in school, I didn't put my full name because they know Mustafa is a Muslim name. So I put my name is Moncho Win. This is called Buddhist name, Moncho Win. The reason why I put the Moncho Win, they don't. When I did, when I faced my examination, the final examination, let's say if I pass exam, they're not going to be make me pass. They're going to put a fail. So I know that many of the the Rohingya people. Even though they pass, they put a fail. So when I was passing them, when I was graduate, so it's not like in America. America is very easy to get a tax to pass examination. When we graduated from my high school, it's really some people is take ten years to pass. Some people two years, some people three years. So I would like to say in America is very good because it's very easy to pass and graduate. Even if you come in everyday school, you have good credit, they make you pass. But in our country, no, you can. Even if they recognize you are the Rohingya, they're not going to be never let you pass. Is there a physical, like, I mean, I'm pretty sure you can tell, like, if I was walking down the street, like, I'm Hispanic compared to, like, a white girl, like, is there a physical difference where, like, if they see you walking down the street, like, hey, he's Rohingyan, like, is, <coughs> is it possible to do that, or do you think there's a... That's the good questions. Uh, if no, let's say many of the people, they go to the world, uh, they go to the market for shopping. We don't have a car there. We don't have electronic devices. When I come in the United States, I see the car, the using cell phone, TV, you know, the iPad. So we don't have those access there. So every time, all the time, we go for shopping, for grocery shopping. We have to go by working by on foot. We need to go working distance. It's like 20 minutes, 30 minutes. The market is there. So every market. We go there, we have to cross the police station. There's a police station checkpoint every street. So when we go there, if they, when they recognize, they're going to call you. Only they suspect you. So yeah, when they call problem. you, they're going to use a different language, which is called Burmese. The Burmese language, let's say they use the Burmese language, or let's say, okay, where are you going? If you understand, they're going to. These let little, you go. These tests. <coughs> yeah, they let you go. If you don't understand, like you're kind of nervous, they're going to let you sit there. And if you can give the bribe, they let you go. Unless you give a bribe, they're not going to let you go. At least you have to sit there for one night or one day. So someone, your parents should come and looking for there, and they're going to find money from your parents. Then you can go there. <coughs> wait, wait, by the way, I forgot to tell you, uh, take no, just write a bullet point summary of this, this guest summary, because there's a, a, that's one of the assignments I have on, on Canvas, it's uh, one of these guest speakers, so turn in your guest summaries at the end of class. Anyway, you should all, you know, this, uh, well, I'll give it back to you also, this may help your, your research paper. Yes. Good to see you. <coughs> so have you learned that language? Like, did you have to? Uh, Rohingya or Burmese? Oh, I know the Burmese because I went to the school. Okay. People only uh, speak the Burmese who went to school. Most of the people, two third people, then not able to go to school because they don't have enough money. Only the people who has enough money to pay them, then you can go to school. <coughs> so what languages do you speak? Uh, I speak seven languages fluently. So um, I speak Burmese. Rohingya, which is my native language, Bengali, which is from Bangladesh, and uh, Sinhala, which is from Sri Lanka, and Tamil, this is from Sri Lanka too, and Urdu, it is from Pakistan, and Hindi, it's from, from India. So, and also I'm trying to learn a different language, which is called uh, Spanish. So I don't know if anyone has, anyone can speak Spanish here, but I speak Spanish a little bit, not too much. Uh, I speak to a language only the language I speak completely and read and write I mention you seven language which is I tell your name so by I speak seven uh, two of language the total but only I can speak completely fluently read and write seven those language which is I mention you so my backgrounds I'm working as a translator or whether for interpretations this is called one of the company which is called CLI satisfies language international so that's the company I works at home. 
and I have uh, two jobs. The, my, the, my first job, I work in a Tyson Food. I think you heard that about Tyson Food, the so product, chicken. the she, no chicken, the beef. beef. Beef and pork and you know, the production. So I work in there around, I start to go from here at two o'clock and come in around at night, two o'clock, sometimes one o'clock in the morning. So from the morning. Yeah, 2 p.m. and 1 a.m., 2 p.m. Sometimes it's, you know, when the work is busy and I have to be wait there for late. So, and I come in home and sleep in here. It's one hour, 20 minutes driving away from here. I know, you know, that is Sherman, Texas. Sherman, Texas. So when I come in home and I just sleep a couple hours, I just log, I just log on my computer. I just log on and I just keep my, I have a landline phone. So they keep calling me, they keep calling me. So from hospital, from so agency. These are translation trans jobs. Yeah, translates so. Translates over the phone. Sometimes, believe me, sometimes I don't sleep at all. <laughs> because I know in America you have to work hard. So my wife always, she insists me, why don't you go and sleep? Why should you going to do the money? I said, you never know, you don't know yet. I'll have a baby now, I'll have a next baby. So what are you going to do, what do you think? My wife said, no, go and sleep, go and sleep. I said, yes, I know that you love me to make me sleep, but... And look what I'm doing to him now. <coughs> so, <coughs> so, because I'm working, I'm trying to work in hard, I know the situation, how I left from my country, I remember the previous history that I struggled and strive myself. So let me tell you the, from the beginning, how did I escape the persecutions mm, from Myanmar uh, in 2006. So, <coughs> When I was graduated from high school and I tried to go to college, so we don't have enough money to give them. So I, I discussed with my parents. <clears throat> I told them my dad, so I said, no, I can't study here as much as I wish. So I have to go to different country. Even if I go to different country, I, can't ha I don't have access to get a, a visa or passport because the Burmese government, they never allow them Rohingya people to have a visa or passport to go to third country. And then what I did, I crossed the border illegally and came to Bangladesh. And I met one of the captains who has experience sending people to Malaysia by boat. And I, 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 I talked to him, how much would I cost if I go to Malaysia by boat? And he says, 10,000 taka, which is $200 United States. And then I called my dad, I says, dad, I met the captain and I asked him how much it will cost. And he says, 10,000 taka, which is called $200 United States. So that time was, a lot of money, $200, uh, $200 is a lot of money for us. And then we have some cattle, <coughs> cow, and my dad says, I'm going to sell them. And then don't worry, stay, stay there. I'm going to sell the cow, and I'm going to collect money, and I'm going to come physically and to give there. And my dad, and he sell the cow, and he collect the money, 10,000 uh, 10, taka. And I came, my dad came to the Bangladesh. Is it's, it's very near, like 30 minutes from my home to cross the border in Bangladesh. It's very close. So and then my dad says, good luck. Make sure, be, be, be careful when you go to different country. Make sure, be nice with people, polite, respect, show, follow. Show on the map where you were going from and to. Oh, the Bangladesh is, this is, okay. It is not appearance. Okay, this is the Bangladesh. Okay, this is the Bangladesh. Yes, I'm here. So you got into Bangladesh. This on is the foot, yes. But then by boat, where would you go? Uh, yes, I came to Bangladesh and I met a captain and then I tried to go to Malaysia because I know many of the, my country people, they went to Malaysia, uh, they are working and they're making money and sending the money to okay, their so parents. Okay, Malaysia is way down here, right? Yes. So you would have to go all yes. the way. All the way coming here, and I tried to go to Malaysia with the boat. So uh, when I met with captain, I paid money him, and I asked him before, how many days did it take to go to Malaysia by boat? And he says it's seven days, maximum seven days it take by boat. And I didn't know that, uh, that we need to take enough enough food and to go there. And then when I came the place which is called the Cosbatal, oh, there is the How many people were traveling? 
uh, there were 91 people in one boat. It's very a small boat. It's very congested for everybody. So I came myself. When I came, the different. Uh, this is called a coastal area, coast border, which is very close for the ocean. And the captain asked me to go there. And I went there. I met a lot of friends. Same village, same country. They also trying to go there, but. I, I didn't know that they are coming there because we did not we did not tell each, uh, we did not tell the others. When we come illegally, we don't tell. Hey, I trying to go to Malaysia because the Bangladesh they are very strict. They're going to catch you, put in the jail. So the reason we can come because we can speak the Bengali. So we know that their language. When they catch you, when you know how to speak Spanish, you know when I speak Bengali, they don't, they know that I'm from Bangladesh. That they never ask the Bangladesh authority. Uh, uh, the authority, they never have any access there to ask to show the ID. They don't have authorized to ask the civilian, hey, show the ID, where are you going now? So that's what how I came. And I, I came there and the 91 people, and then we started our journey. I think it was February 2007, February 9, 2007. So I stayed one year in Bangladesh. Uh, <coughs> and then, and you we saw. Illegally? Illegally. Waiting for the boat? I uh, waiting waiting for boat because uh, the captain, the one is a captain who sent in Malaysia when he did not say because he collecting people. When he has enough people, then he's going to take it. He didn't, he did not take like two or three, four people, you know. I didn't know that. When I came there, I meet and I saw the many people, many uh, my friends, and they came from my country, my village, my villages. And the way I started journey, and believe me, only we see the ocean water no land no country i never ever thought that i'm going to reach any country and when it was past seven days we asked the captain how long it will take more days still we don't see anything uh and then he says sometimes it take a couple days more don't worry be patient we almost there after 10 days in ocean we asked him again uh yes captain uh, almost 10 days past, where are you taking us? And then he said, I'm so sorry, I, I missed the way. So he's lost. He lost the way, how to get in Malaysia by boat. And then we start keep crying, everybody, 91 people. Do you know if he, what kind of equipment did they have in the boat? They, they have, we have only the boat, which is, uh, is make oil vessel wooden vessel small yeah it's made by wood it's not like the electrical the boat which is like a sheep or not like that. It's make wood like they have an angel so after 10 days when he told us that he lost the way there is nothing to do what it's can no, we do no, no, so the, he no there's no radio no there's radio. no any cell phone you can use because it's out of the network there's only two cell phone but it's, we can't connect with anybody because it's very far it's out of the network, in, it's a middle ocean. And then, and then what can we do? One of, uh, one of our members, the friends, what he did, why did you take us here if you don't know the way? He's really aggressive and get mad with him. He just grabbed him and throw into the water, he the captain. The captain yeah, the, the captain. The guy, he just grabbed him and throw water. Before we die, we're going to kill you first. Why are you trying to kill this people life? But he never sent any people to Malaysia. He doesn't have any experience. The reason he come because for money. How much did it cost for a ticket to get on? Uh, it's 10,000 taka, 10,000 taka, which is $200 here. And then what can we do? We just keep crying. The captain died. He already drowned in the water. So, and we keep crying, we keep crying and praying. And then 15 days, we have five people die because for starvation. No food, no water. And then, you know, how we became like very skinny during that time. And we don't have ability, we don't have capacity to throw them into the water, the people who die. I mean, just we don't have any capacity just to grab them and lift up because we don't have food, no water, or nothing. Did, what kind of little tricks did you do or change to try to survive in there? Uh, yes, that's what I'm trying to just explain. So, we don't know that, we don't hope that, we don't have any hope that we're going to reach any country, it's going to be anybody going to come and save and rescue our life. 
and then we just keep floating into the sea without food and water it was 27 days no food no water some of us drinking water from ocean believe me it's very salty very salty what can we do no water we just drink the salty water and then after 27 days we see the one of the fishing trawler coming toward and then we see them and we just I call them, they come in two or three fish, yeah, I think three fishing trawler, they just come very close. They just turning around and look us because they're looking, making sure what kind of people are these are floating in the sea. And the wind change just come in very close and they're trying to go back. They're trying to return back and then we thought maybe if we leave them, if we left them, there is nobody else, they're going to skip our life. So when they're trying to go back, we just start keeping, we just start uh, swimming everybody jump into the water I start swimming when we swim in this hole they right away came they right away came and pick up all of us in their boat so we only found the people 71 people the 21 people has passed away they died in drawn water so when we get in their boat and they ask in where are you are going and I explain them the one of the their boat people he can speak Hindi and I speak Hindi and I explain them oh, this is the situation we're trying to go to Malaysia but illegally so unfortunately the captain he has lost the way so and he already died too we throw him water the reason because he tried to kill all of our life so this is the situation that we left from our country we don't have a peace of our country we don't have any access there so that's why we're trying to go to a different country to live peace, uh, peacefully where we can get a freedom that's sort of how, how we decided to migrate and then okay well and he says okay no problem we call the navy of sri lanka this is the boat we found is from sri lanka and he said the one of their captain says okay no worries and we called the navy of sri lanka they're going to come it's take two days two night imagine how far we are floating into the sea the ocean no. The Navy ship is going to come two days to night. Imagine, how far is it? Is it, is it can we Sri see Lanka? It on the map? Sri Lanka? Uh, Sri Lanka. I'm pretty sure Sri Lanka will be here. Well, where did your boat go? Where was your boat found? Uh, okay, boat should, this is the ocean, Bengal. Yeah. yeah. The boat should be here. The, the boat should be here. There, pond. It's in the middle, the ocean. Yeah. Should be here. And and then and they feed the food, and they, they give a treatment, medical treatment. People who are weak, and they give. They actually very take care, of, very good for every one of us. And then they call navy after two days, two night. The navy came. And they did transfer to us from which, their boat. Sh Sri Lanka. Sri Lanka Navy came. And then they have investigated. They asked him, what kind of people you are going where? And I told them that, so this is the situation we left from our country. And he's asking, why did you left from your country? Because the dictatorship of the government, they are not allowing us to live peacefully, especially for a Rohingya minority, so that we migrate to decide to go somewhere where we can live in freedom. Okay. What will happen if you go back in your country? We're going to send you back to your country. I said, we can't go our country because we already left the illegal and they know that we are Rohingya. If you go back to our country, they will kill our sentence for long life in the jail. So we don't want to face this situation. And then they said, okay, well, no problem. So we have a minute thing to ask you the question. So we when should we get the land of Sri Lanka and we're going to be send you the deport camp. So when you came, it's the land of the name is the Tinkomeli in Sri Lanka. They had the land we reached there in Tinkomeli. And then some of us, I think most of the us, they admitted in hospital and they put IV, saline and everything. So when we are all okay and they send you the deport camp, which is called Marihana. Marihana police station is from Tinkomeli to Marihana is take one day by bus. And they send in there is called the deportation camp. Sri Lanka. Sri Lanka. So when we get there and after a week and Sri Lanka Navy came there. Sorry, the Burmese embassy came there. The Burmese embassy came and asked him. He using the Burmese language. So I'm the one who speak only Burmese. So none of us, seventy one people, none of us speak Burmese language. 
and the Burmese embassy and he said I don't believe these people from my country because these people they cannot speak Burmese and then I said you know that where the Rohingya coming from which is called Rakhine State and then there is another policeman he says I think he is still doing the discrimination see because he knows that we speak a different dialect I told him in front of him he knows we speak a different dialect he says only I am the one who Burmese because I speak uh, Burmese no I went to a school I learned a Burmese subject that's what I speak a Burmese these people they never been to school these are innocent people it does seem in they are not Rohingya they are not from Burma and I told the policeman you have to get an interpreter find the interpreter Rohingya from Myanmar and they just go online and they found the Rohingya interpreter and the Rohingya interpreter came over there and then they said yes these people are from Rakhine state from Myanmar and then okay well so embassy says okay I'm going to send you guys to back in your country and I told we never going to back in our country there is the one is bad Sri Lanka is the country that save our life we like a reborn again in this country if they kill us they hang up we are angry we are satisfied we don't want to go back in our country is better than to so commit a suicide in this country than go back in our country which one do you like would you like to die ourselves suicide or would you like to send to back in our country which one do you like what do you prefer the you know the Sri Lanka the OIC one of the policemen he was really you know he know he understand all the situation he was really stressful because he knows the situation already in Myanmar and he says okay well no problem and the day put in the port if you don't go back in your country no problem we're going to keep in here uh, after and we stayed there I think in three months in deportation camp and then one of the policemen he advised me hey if you don't go back in your country if you don't have any access to work in United Sri Lanka if you don't go outside what will happen what is the point in your life you can't just sit in down here man do trying to do something he just advised me always he's really very good and he teach me their language too I just take a note and whatever he speak very good English and then I say man I don't know this this is really very new country for me and new culture so please advise me what can I do and he said you are the one who speak English you are the one who smart has a knowledge I don't think other people they can do that so let me bring the one application for you blank just fill up write in all your situation and send to the UNHCR office we have the UN office here which is called United Nations High Commissioner for Refugees and just send it here and he just came with me and he gave me blank paper I just write all our members name people names and age and situation that we left from our country and why don't you go back in our country what will happen if you went to back our country and what we have to do here what will happen in our situation so this is our humble request we just send a letter to your initial office right away after one week the UNHCR official came and then they says how long have you been here I says three months almost three months so why nobody has informed us I says we don't know so and they says okay no problem we're going to be asked different question from different person different people because everybody is going to be different case so we're going to ask this separately and then the UN I'm, I'm, I'm interpreter there for everyone and the day asking is anybody like to go back in your country we're going to spend our own money and send it to back your country is anybody like to go back your country I says the, I ask them everywhere there's none of them none of them like to go back to the country they ask why because they're going to kill or send us the whole life in the jail or prison that's why we don't want okay no problem the UNHCR PSL says we're going to take care of you guys we're going to make a refugee a starter in Sri Lanka but none of you guys can work if you work if the police of Sri Lanka they found you they're going to deport it back to your country so make sure none of you guys can work if you're okay we're going to take care of you and make a refugee a starter and then we says okay we're not going to work so and we ask what will happen in our life if we can work in Sri Lanka even though if you become refugee state at how are we going to survive how are we going to eat so how are we going to be help our parents so what going to be our life in future the UNHCR official says don't worry we're going to take care of everything but only thing we need to know that making sure that if we make you a refugee state in Sri Lanka 
is not need to be working here. That's very important to understand everyone. We said, well, no problem. And then they give a certificate which is called Refugee of Sri Lanka from Burma. They just give a certificate and they're released from the deport camp. And they release and they make it, they, they rented one building. It's a really very big building which is called Colombo in Sri Lanka. And I think two stores, two floor, uh, two floor building. So 71 people from out of 71 to, and I think 14 people, they went back to their country. I think more, yeah, 14 people there from Bangladesh. So they went back, so we all 55 people over there. And then we lived there in the UNHCR, from UNHCR office, they give 15,000 15, rupees. Uh, this is called rupees of Sri Lanka, it's called uh, from 15,000 rupees to $100 uh, every month for each and everybody for refugee. And then they, they take care of the rent. They only give us 15,000 for eat, for daily expenses. Uh, to buy the clothes and then they know they says the 15,000 rupees is going to be enough for each one so and they provide this facility every they give a kind of facility like they provide English teacher they provide a computer class they provide the sport like soccer uh, cricket baseball and everything so they says if anyone to like to go to college if anyone want to study from the beginning we are ready to help you so and the, our friends, my friends, they are requesting, yes, we need to learn English because we never know where we're going to be. So some of us, they, win, they, they enroll to the school, ESL class, which is English second language. And then I went to the college there. So you know how much it will cost for college? 80,000 rupees of Sri Lanka, which is $800 every month. I was there three years in college. So my background is multimedia and graphic design. So I received my certificate from there. And also I did the course, which is called software engineering. And so I know that about computer background, everything, how to repair computer, you know, the cleaning the so uh, virus and the changing the new window. So I know those things. And then after three years, I started there. And then the UNHCR official, they come in every month they keep contact me if anyone need any, anybody needs anything help if anything something happen in case of an emergency would they give one emergency number we call them and let them know they are going to come and take care of us and then after 3 years and then we had a meetings with all our people and UNHCR official there is a one which is called Tanga she is working in the United States and she says i have good news that i submitted all the paperwork to the United States but we don't know when they're going to be accept. I submit three country, number one United States, number two in Australia, number three in New Zealand. But I don't know which country is going to accept you guys. As soon as they accept, you're going to let you know. And then, okay, no problem, because we are really happy there. They give uh, daily expenses money, and they provide English teacher, they provide the computer class, and they send you to school, and they also spend money for college. You know, it's really very, it's better than our country. As long as you don't work there. As long as we don't work. But what I did at the same time, I work as well. When I was finished my background, the graphic design, but I didn't tell the UNHCR sure that I work. Because I have a friend who has the printing press. You know, the printing press, they're printing calendar or newspaper. So, and he says, if you like to work here, you can come in, anyone come in and ask him, hey, why you work, if they find out that you're working illegally, tell them I'm learning. I'm the one who's going to take care. So my boss, he says, tell them I'm learning. And nobody, I worked there, I think three years, so nobody go there and ask me. In case of sometimes there's somebody come in and ask you, hey, you don't have any documentation in you, why you are working illegally? That's what my boss says, tell them I'm learning. Nobody's going to do nothing to you because I'm the one who's going to take you. And then I worked there. After six years, the, the UNHCR, one of the, I think her name is Elizabeth. She is from Texas. So she went there to take care of us. And she says, I have a great news. So we got the immigration. We got the news from you, for all of you, that the United States, they accepted you all. So. We're going to be divided you all as a group, like 10 people, 
five people we're going to be divided in growth so it's going to be next month we're going to be flight and then we are really very happy because after six years and then you know I, I heard it kind of the same people from the boat yes all of them still 55? yeah still 55 and then we are really happy because we know that America when we heard in America the country oh it's the biggest name you know and also they have a dollar the money is dollar it's big money we always happy oh and we keep calling our parents yeah mom do we accept that in the United States we're going to be next month they are very glad they are very happy oh and we are so happy as well and then <coughs> okay and they divided 10 people five people and then I'm the one final flight because all of my friends they flight and I'm the one final one because they keep me because of the translation for interpreter them and then the, uh, everybody is a different state. Some of the news, uh, Arizona, Georgia, Chicago, Utah, North Colorado, South Colorado, Colorado, New Hampshire, uh, Texas. Uh, so different states, you know, they send a different state. And then I was in New Hampshire when I come there. It's really cool, I told you that. So I moved in Texas, I love the Texas. It's really good weather, same like my country. So this is how I came. This is how I face my situation and coming here in another state. So it's really, uh, I would like to mention you guys. Uh, I mean, like, I don't know, has anybody had any this kind of situation in your life? I don't think so. So this is how we struggle and strive my life. I came in the United States, now easy. So yeah, when so I come in here, I'm so happy. You know why? The reason why? America is a freedom country, number one. You can active any religion, whatever you want. Number two, America is a freedom of speech. Number two, no any discrimination. Doesn't matter who you are. Same. Everyone is same. Because I see when I met in people here and I learned a new new culture. When when I was in my country, when somebody showed me the thumb, that's very bad. People get mad. When somebody show you thumb, People got a mad. That means you're telling him something bad. When I came in here, people showing this. And then this is, <laughs> when, believe me, when I get the first uh, social security office, one of the officer, when I have filled up all the application and he showed me the, this is the first time I met with the white people. And he showed me the white. And then I really get, I really mad. And then I go to the counter and I ask him, one of the means, I, excuse me, miss. Can you ask this guy, why did he show me the thumb? Please. I'm so aggressive and mad with him. And then she go there and, hey, why did you ask the thumb? But, oh, no, he did the excellent job. You know, he did a great job. That's what I should. Oh, I'm so, I'm so sorry. I didn't know that. This man in my country is bad. So that's what I think maybe I did something wrong. That's what I asked you. I'm so sorry. I apologize. Uh, this is the new thing I learned. So if you're showing this, my country, they're really getting mad with you. Serious. So in America has a different culture. And I see many of the, my friends, especially from Mexico. I have a many Mexico friends who are working in here. And I learn different, different culture. So I'm, I'm so happy here. Because the, t the American people, they're glad to teach new people. When we come from different country, I never see anybody refuse if I ask something. When I come in Texas, I don't have a car. And then I have a one, my friend, he playing me, he playing with me soccer. He's our team member, soccer team member. And he is the one who showed me the way, how to go hospital, how to find a job. He showed me all the direction. So he's really very helpful. I think he's working in the, the bad pitch, choice in the Richland, uh, sorry, Richardson. I think you guys know the question, choice, bad pitch in the Richland, Richardson. So I go sometime every Sunday. So I love it. I go there. Some people say, hey, you're Muslim. Why do you come in here? No. I believe. What I believe? I follow. I come in here. People say, so why you come in? I say, I believe it. I like it. So I really, really like American people. I'm so appreciated because nobody any showing discrimination. Doesn't matter where you're from. Even though I work in India, in Tyson company, believe me, too many, too many people, too many people from different country. 
but everybody has a different accent, different accent, different culture, but we never see anyone has unrespected and denied something accent. It's really helpful here. That's what I always, when I talk into my country, I always letting them know, hey, America is the best country. I never go my country, any country from here. I'm going to live in here. So, and also, we have a Rohingya community here. I think more than 200 family. So they came from different countries, such as Sri Lanka, Pakistan, Bangladesh, Malaysia, Thailand. Most of them, they came from Malaysia. There are 1.2 million people in Malaysia, Rohingya people. All of them, they escaped by boat. <clears throat> That's why we're trying to go there. So I think slowly, slowly, some of them, they are settled down in the United States. Most of them, I think I know many of the majority people, Rohingya, they are living in Indiana. There uh, must be a lot of boats that didn't make it, right? <laughs> yes. So many of the people, they come illegal. So the God is the one who saved her, you know. Yeah. So we never know I'm going to be here. So when we proposal something, the God disposal. So that means what? We never know what we're going to be, right place. Now I'm the right place in America. Okay, so we only have <coughs> a minute here. Any quick, quick questions here? How, how old are you? Uh, I'm 27 years old now. <coughs> what about your parents? Are they still? Uh, <coughs> excuse me. My parents, they already passed away because they already killed. <coughs> the reason I'm telling you, the reason why they killed, uh, the reason I left from my country. Every month, the state of security forces of Myanmar, they go to have shake every houses, especially for Rohingya community. When they went to their, my home, they shake by my parents. Hey, why is your son? My parents say, I don't know whether he alive or not. We don't know where here, because if this is, he left from here to a different country, so they know they're going to kill them. And then the police give a warning, okay, we're going to come next week. You have to bring your son here and show in front of us. If not, we're going to be kill you. And then <clears throat> my parents, they cannot show me there because I'm not living anymore. And that they have been getting shot, all of my family. So I have only one sister left and one brother. They already in Bangladesh. And that they burn all my house. And then <clears throat> they confiscate all our land. What do you have to have a farm, cattle, poultry? They, everything they confiscate. We don't have nothing there. The last two months ago, there was an attack. I think you heard about it. There was an attack. The attack, it was happened by the state of security forces, but they blame it to the Rohingya people, the victims. They says Rohingya people are the who was attacked there. But how are we going to be attacked there as innocent people? It's impossible because they want to wipe out all the Rohingya people to complete the end of the nation. That's what they showing up there. So more than 5,000 Rohingya people, they move across the, the fleet to the Bangladesh now. They all are homeless. You can see in YouTube, too many videos. They don't have access to yeah, live there. They have like holes. Told, uh, all right, we Last two weeks, uh, I know that one of my relatives who are living there, and he, I have all evidence on my phone. I can show you, you guys, if you want. So all more than... 300, 3,500 women, they raped and killed, and 2,000 uh, 2, children, they throw away, like they throw to the fire, they kill them. So when I was in my country, I think two, b 3 billion or something, we are bringing a minority there. Now, you know how many people are there now? I think one million only. Okay. They all we, are Thank you so much. I appreciate you guys.